Castle Grayskull was one of the most popular playsets sold in the 1980s and reappeared on web-based store shelves in a brand new, much larger scale in 2002 with the release of the He-Man and the Masters of the Universe 2000X toy line and TV series. Centuries ago, during the Great Wars, Grayskull was built by Titus and the giants from the mountains of Perpetua, the most powerful wizard in the universe hero, the Paternian people, the Council of Elders who ruled over Eternia at that time, and the descendants of King Gerard, which included the later King Devon Grayskull. At the recommendation of the sorceress, who eventually became Queen Vienna, the Council of Elders concentrated their power in the Hall of Wisdom and reshaped it into a terrifying castle that deterred anyone from plundering it until a champion would arise to defend the forces of good. According to the map of Eternia, Castle Grayskull resides on the exact opposite side of the planet at Snake Mountain, just south of the Evergreen Forest and northwest of the Eternian Palace and the capital city of Eternos. The Sands of Time and the Sands of Fire separate the Evergreen Forest at Grayskull's northern border from the Evil Horde to the east, with the Ocean of Gnarl separating it from the Evil Horde on the western side. Castle Grayskull was once home to King Grayskull, an ancestor of Prince Adam and He-Man, who died defending his kingdom and Eternia as a whole from Hordak. Upon his death, King Grayskull transferred his power into his sword, which originally belonged to the powerful wizard Hero, originally named the Sword of Life by the overlords of the timeless dimension of Trolla that now forms the basis of He-Man's power. His wife Vina became the first sorceress, and his advisors became the Council of Elders. He also had an enormous green lion as a mount, bearing the same armor as Battlecat, and is presumably where Battlecat gains his powers. King Grayskull lived 500 years before the, his descendants, King Randor, He-Man, and She-Ra. When the Council of Elders reached the end of their rule during Keldor's invasion, they made Captain Randor King of Eternia. Castle Grayskull was released by Mattel for inclusion in their Masters of the Universe Classics action figure line mid to late November 2013, and a new character named Castle Grayskull Man, described as the heroic embodiment of Castle Grayskull, was created by Daniel Benedict and was the winner of the 30th anniversary Create a Character Contest. The figure of Castle Grayskull Man was released in November of 2012. John Wise here with your Masters of the Universe Classics Castle Grayskull review. So, uh, as you can see, this thing is massive. And I'm going to tell you now, when I first got this, uh, when it was first released, I had to do a comparison to the original vintage, and you can, in fact, uh, place the vintage castle inside this thing. It won't shut, but you can put it in here. It's amazing. So let's go ahead and get started. This is going to be amazing. So first off, we have the outside here. Really cool. Now, the guys who did this was the Four Horsemen. They're the ones that are responsible for the 
we do, uh, and we sculpted the 2000X Master Universe line. They went ahead and did the Master Universe Classics line. So, uh, first off, okay, I mean, this thing is filled with detail. Um, I mean, you have nicks, you have cracks, uh, the stone looks stone. Um, maybe a little bit more black wash, uh, you know, would have been nice, but I mean, for the most part, this thing looks awesome. Um, and the wooden door here looks just amazing. The metal, the plate on here, you can see it even has some rust on it. Um, nice touches with the wood paint. Uh, the eyes just look so sunken. You don't want to go near this thing. So, and this thing has some action features too that we'll go over in the review. We're going to go over the main details of the sculpt here first. Um, of course, like the original, you got the cannon that sits up here, uh, and the flag. You got the good guys for when they had the castle. You got the bad guys for when they got the castle. So, you're picking this. is just a sits up there. So you put it here, you put it there, you put it over here. You can put it inside the castle. It doesn't matter. But still, a nice little nod to the original vintage castle. Moving along the side here. Like I said, when this thing has detail, when I say this thing has detail, I really mean because. Look at this, you can have a metal painted, fully metal painted and sculpted uh, metal hook here for whatever reason. That's pretty cool. I mean, they didn't have to paint it, but it's nice they did add an extra detail. You got the wood paneling here, you got the windows, more wood paneling. This is amazing. And one thing I want to point out is in the original, now this whole Castle Grayskull was made from the original, it was supposed to be uh, from the original prototype version. So there's pieces here that they've added that weren't included in the original vintage uh, castle. For instance, um, we have a hidden door here, which does open, and you'll notice it has a little keyhole here. An action figure named Scare Globe in the Master Universe Classics line came with the key to open this door. So if you have that figure, you're going to be able to use that key. If not, it will still open on the inside. You just got to give it a push. Still pretty cool, and again, it really does look like it's part of the castle too. Okay, so as you can see, on the inside of this thing, it's pretty cool. And again, unlike the vintage, this has three levels of play. So let's start here, down here at the bottom. Okay, first off, I need to move this because this weapons rack was sold separately about a year before the castle. So let's start from over here. So over here, You'll notice also that the castle has a floor, plan, like an like actual floor for play. Um, it was something that they decided to add. Uh, again, one didn't need to, but it was really cool because with the original vintage, you know, you had the whatever floor you were playing on. It was your floor for the castle. So this was a kind of a nice addition. Uh, you can see the floor very uh, shaded and chipped and very just worn. I love the paint job on this. Uh, you'll notice that this is actually used real chains. I'm not gonna break them. Okay, real chains. They just clip right on. You have the door here, which, if you'll notice, looks like a real tongue. And now this door does open, and I'll go over that feature here in just a little bit. So when I show you all the little action features of this thing. Now, you'll remember the original castle had a trap door. It was supposed to, uh, the figure was supposed to fall in a, um, a dungeon. This was also supposed to do that, but for whatever reason, they moved the dungeon over here. Unlike the vintage, this one actually has a dungeon. Before, it was just a little sticker down here that they found. And the door does open. Just give it a glow pole. And you can actually put action figures inside the door. So, looking inside, you'll notice that they kind of redid that same sticker just a little bit more detailed for the dungeon. And if you go a little further up, there is actually manacles right here. And they are of the same, it is metal chain. You can actually fit a figure in there and attach them to the manacle. Um, and I'll show you kind of that a little bit when we go over the features. Uh, moving over this way, you'll notice the door that I showed you earlier 
again this does just open you just kind of push it there we go and it opens up that's another way one of three ways in the castle gray skull uh little weapons here they're separate they do just kind of randomly pull off and some swords and you can put them on pretty much anywhere you want that has those little pegs here in the castle they just and it is pretty much the same shield that came with your with that he-man figure it's just unpainted and again that just can clip right on right there uh like the original vintage we do have an elevator here and again part of the features i'll go over those uh, up here we have the second floor with a nice now the original castle gray skull was known for having a bunch of stickers and cardboard pieces the horseman decided to uh, get rid of all those in favor of an actual sculpted working computer panel and screen which shows the Eternian Galaxy. You have little buttons here. You can figure stand here operating them. So that's pretty cool. And of course one of the, the main features of the castle was the uh, little suit of armor. Again that was used to be a cardboard piece. That is, this is a solid hollowed out sculpted uh, kind of like a minifig almost with a little operating computer. We have the trap door right here and it's just a little stick right over the, uh, right over the door um, nice little flags here indicating good and evil and of course we have our throne which is a little dusty but that's okay and we'll go from there to the top which is our third floor again we have more some of that awesome wood paneling here uh, the boards are just, they just look amazing. Perfect wash. The wash here. And something else that the horseman decided to do is they have the handle. Now this handle is actually a separate piece that you can have the option of putting on. I did just to add more to the castle. Uh, you can work it off to get it off, but pretty much once it's in there, it's in there. So I don't want to risk breaking it to take it off. So there we go. Now, <clears throat> let's show you some of the features on this thing. So, well, so next up, let's go ahead and show you some of the accessories that came with this thing. Okay, so you remember the original castle came with a ladder, which if you look at this ladder, this ladder looks amazing. Perfectly nice painted, nicely sculpted. Nicely detailed. You got what looks like metal here for the hooks to where the original castle was pretty much just one solid piece. And of course you can put this ladder anywhere you want in the castle, outside the castle. So um, just nice little accessory there. Of course if you own the original vintage uh, castle we had the practice thing and this. Now something I want to notate, this is more detailed because there's a face up here. You got the fists, you got the dragon head, and of course you got the claw feet. Now the original one spun. This one does spin, but it doesn't really spin like the other one did. I mean, I, you can make it do that. It, it, I, I kind of get it going a little better, but there is a little bit of toughness there. But, say, so. Still, nice little accessory for the castle. This was one of the accessories that was supposed to come with the original Castle Grey Skull. It's just a simple little flight pack. And uh, it's supposed to come undone. So you just undo the strap. You place it around your Master Universe figure that you want to fly. Put the strap back in and they're ready to fly. Um, little accessories throughout the castle is various different weapons that you could put here for instance. You put a power sword and Shira's sword up there. Uh, we have various different little weapons that came with. You could put them here. Um, we have a little change of monocles. You can even switch them out. 
So, of course, we have our flag, which I pointed out earlier. And, of course, it also came with the cannon. Now you notice that I didn't include one accessory that came with the original castle, and that is the weapons rack. That's because roughly around about a year before it was announced they were going to do the castle, they brought out the weapons pack. Uh, the weapons rack is a weapons pack, um, and of course this you can it has the same type of wood detail and metal detail as the uh, castle gray skull has. Got, Weapons, shields, stuff for all your master's weapons here. And even these are painted. Like, look at the, there's rust on the axe. So if you have the weapons rack, you can go ahead and add it to your castle gray skull. And it looks really cool. Now I know what you're wanting. You're wanting, what does this massive thing do? Well, let's go in and let me show you all the cool special features. This has a working drawbridge. If you remember, you put the two power swords together, you put them right here in the keyhole, you pull and the thing was open. That's not how this one works. They opted to go more for the mini comic, the animated series way of opening the door, which is you take the power sword and you put it in the slot like so. And then you just open it up like so. And the drawbridge, if you notice, it's got all these awesome teeth. Tongue. To add more to that gruesome look to the castle. And of course, I already showed you the side door, which also is a one way into the castle. And this is the third way in and out of the castle. Now, like the original castle, this also has a working elevator. So, what you would do is you would take your Masters of the Universe figure, they got pegs here, and you just plug them in like so. And then you can just take it and he can go to the next floor. Can you tell I didn't haven't used this before very well? And then the figure can just go on, and there you go. And the elevator does go up to the third floor as well. So they can go this way. I would have preferred the elevator to be a little bit more loose. As you can tell, it's a little tough. Maybe if we worked it out a bit. Up here, we actually have two gold skulls which are removable. They are on a ball joint and uh, it's mostly for decoration but if you wanted to put these on one of your Master Universe classic figures you can. I'll show you how to do that real quick. You simply take the figure, pop his head off and then just pop the skull off. And there we go. Doesn't look all that great, but that's something you have the option of doing. And then you can just pop the head. You can tell once these heads are on, they're Okay, so tight. another feature that they kept from the original vintage line was the awesome trap door. So and the trap door works exactly like the original. You just go to the throne, you move it from the side, and He-Man falls. Now, in the now again, this was supposed to be, and it's even on the box, where he's supposed to fall into the dungeon, but for whatever reason, they decided to go vintage. Let's 
say, for instance, He-Man didn't fall for that trick. Now Skeletor's in trouble. He needs to make a quick escape. He-Man's blocking the way. Or is he? Castle Grayskull has a third way in and out. And that's a hidden door right here in the throne room. That was not available in the vintage. And then Skeletor just makes his escape like so. Falls off the cliff because they did, you know, really compensate for that. Uh, but anyway, let's say he did. And then he can escape out the side here and down the ladder. Eh, I'll get you next time, He-Man. Next time. This is, again, one of those features like the door where if you have a specific action figure um, that came with an accessory, this option here is good for that. We have a little hidden, hidden door here. Not really hidden. And inside, we have this little altar here, which is to fit an orb that I believe came with King Grayskull. It was the orb of Grayskull. You would put it right in there. And then you just fit it right in here. And that is where the power of Grayskull, Grayskull is stored. Now, if you don't have the orb, it's no big deal. You can still put that in here. It still looks really cool. You can see also that it has a nice almost translucent blue plastic nicely painted uh, this is also good you can actually store extra weapons in here um, extra heads if you have those so one more feature this thing has and it's I, I say it's this one for last because it really is kind of a bad feature and that's you'll notice this little hole right here this is if you had bought the Master Universe Classics Wind Raider. It came with a stand, and the stand could fit right in this hole, and the Wind Raider would basically literally sit right about here and take up a lot of play space. Um, it was something that the fans didn't, that they saw early on uh, and expressed uh, distaste for, and Medi Collector, for whatever reason, decided to keep it in here. Um, I kind of wish they would have added a cover for this, so we didn't have this ugly hole here if you didn't want the option. So, but this is, that's just another feature that they did, whether we wanted it or not, did, um, did add. And... Okay, so now for my thoughts on this. Um, first, the cons. The cons being, uh, my, my, one of my big cons is the fact that it has the hole uh, for the Wind Raider. Um, they, uh, even if they couldn't, change that sculpt um, before the production, which I think they could have. They should have at least offered those who bought it later on like a little manhole cover or a grate to put over that. Because uh, it really is. It's just ugly. It's just there. So that would have been something nice, uh, especially for the price. Which leads me to my second con. Now, as cool as this thing is, the price tag on this one that was available uh, for pre-order at MaddieCollector.com was around $300. Um, I was lucky enough to get this for my uh, birthday slash Christmas present, so it didn't cost me $300, um, but it did cost my dad $300, um, which if a PS4 was available at that time, I probably would have chose that, honestly, um, until I actually got this. I'll go over that in a minute. Uh, my third um, being that uh, on the box, uh, I should have brought the box. It specifically said that on the box that the trapdoor went to the dungeon. It would have been nice uh, if they somehow managed, would have been able to figure out how to do that. That would have been really cool. There's also supposed to be some extra accessories that were supposed to come with this when we were uh, originally told uh, that it was for pre order. Because we were pre ordering the castle blind and based on uh, uh, artwork and drawings. Uh, originally, there was supposed to be a play mat to go around the castle. There was supposed to be a moat right here, and that dated back to the original prototype uh, for the vintage castle. This was also supposed to come with a uh, torture rack. Uh, the vintage one uh, didn't come with it, obviously because it's a kid's play toy. This is an adult collector toy, so the torture rack probably would have been kind of cool to have with this thing. Um, so other accessories were also supposed to be included. It would just be nice if they didn't make them available now, you know, then they could have maybe made them available to purchase later on. 
Um, so those are probably my biggest issues with this thing. Um, other than that, and those are nitpicks, honestly. Those are just nitpicks. Um, the pros, I'm going to tell you right now, I have, I have owned and I still own so many flight sets. I own the Turtles Lair, the Technodrome. I have the original 77 Death Star, Star Wars play set. Uh, this is by far my favorite play set. Uh, I own the original Vintage. This kicks this one right out of the, off the shelf. Uh, the detail on this thing, the play value, the fact they added three layers instead of two. Um, it's just, it's, it's a lot of fun. And I'll admit, when I first got this in the mail, and I took it out of the box and I put it together, I immediately took my He-Man figures out and I started playing with the thing. Um, I hadn't done that in years. Now I'm just going to say I went pew, 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 wah. I'll get you, he <laughs> Didn't do all that, but um, maybe a little bit. Uh, but of course, I did pose them, you know. And when this is on my shelf, uh, Man at Arms is up here. He's manning the cannon, and you know, he man who's on the battle cat down here fighting Skeletor and Evil Lynn. The Ram Man is fighting Trap Jaw. So, I mean, the the thing I love to have this displayed on my shelf openly like this. Unfortunately, as you can see, it's really huge. Not a lot of shelf space. It's probably one of the cons, actually. Um, the sculpting on this thing is beautiful. The paint job, the deco, the fact that they went, instead of like stickers and ca cardboard, they actually did sculpts into the um, place set. It was just wonderful. So uh, kudos to the horsemen. They did an amazing job on this thing. And, um, yeah, I mean, percent, I mean, Scale, I mean, just look at this thing. This thing is huge. Like I said earlier, you put the original Castle Grey Soul. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, for me, this thing is a, it, it's a 9. It's a 9. Um, the thing that did make it a 10, of course, were the little nitpicks that I made. But uh, if you, this is uh, no longer available on MagicLink.com. It's now uh, available on Third Market. Um, you can actually get this... Uh, I found these for around $150 to $300 on eBay, on Amazon. So these are still available from collectors who've bought multiples and are trying to get rid of them. So um, if you're a He-Man fan, if you're a Masterful Universe uh, Classics fan, by all means, pick this up. I mean, it's definitely worth it. Um, you might have to close it up and display it on your shelf unless you have, you know, these kind of tables or, you know, floor space to display them on. Um, grab one. This is an amazing, amazing piece, amazing backdrop to your figures. And again, the playability of this thing is so awesome. In fact, I'm going to get off here and I'm going to start playing now because this thing is really cool. So. Hey, John. Something I thought would be neat that the Four Horsemen could do is for display purposes only, and maybe some gameplay, um, sell separately the other two sides to it. The back and the... Uh, here yeah for displaying yeah, displaying or just playing yeah. you know kind of open it up and i was that's i was kind of hoping that's what they were i was kind of hoping that they would offer like uh, furniture pieces kind of like i said it would have been nice if later on they had uh brought us it was like the the, the playmat mode to put this on yeah the torso rack the uh, i think it was a few other accessories that would have been nice um Matic, um, the Master Universe Classics line has, has been taken over by Super 7. Matty Collector has closed down its site now. Super 7 has taken over the Master Universe Classics. So hopefully we can get some of the uh, figures that uh, we never got. Like we were, Fisto was one of them. Uh, they they underproduced Fisto. There were people who subscribed to him that never got their figure. So hopefully we can get some of those figures and maybe we can get some of those awesome other accessories too. Now that they've taken over, so. Quick, quick, let me in, let me in. Ah, ah, good kitty, good kitty. Maybe Skyfall has some meow mix. Meow, 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 meow. Mm. I'll get you for this, He-Man, someday. <laughs> Ah, 
has been the worst day of my life. No, no, anything but that. No, not cat urine. No. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, man, this is the worst day of my life. And of course, if you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like, comment below, and share with your friends. <laughs> I hate you.